Holy crap. Please welcome Russell Crowe, everybody. Russell Crowe. Hi, mate. Welcome, my dear. How are you? Cheers. Good. Hey, it's very nice to see you. I can't help but notice, uh, forgive me, you weren't in that clip. <laughs> no, but it's a good clip, though, isn't it? It's a good clip. <laughs> it, is it a clip of the movie you're in? As far as I know. Well, that's good. <laughs> And you, at least it's a clip of the movie. And that's, what is the movie about? Well, this what is you... a late night show, right? Right, yeah, well, and very as, late. As yeah. you probably know, the vast majority of your audience is probably asleep by about now. Or... or... <laughs> so, or... Oh. Or... <laughs> so oh, yeah, want... yeah, yeah, yeah. Raisin Bran. You want mm -hmm. something snappy. To wake, wake them up. Wake them up. Yeah, right. I didn't mind that they were asleep for the first bit, but I'd like them to be awake Hey, no, hey! <laughs> Why? Why? Because I, this is the bit that I'm in. <laughs> it's very nice to see you. It's wonderful I, to see you. And that Lee Erickson. It's Lee Erickson day, yeah. yeah. Congratulations. Look, look. Yeah, you've got the hair. Yeah. Yeah, you look a bit. Let's do are it. You, are you playing let's a Viking? Let's publicly claim the uh, story rights now. Right. And let's just get the movie underway. Well, uh, yeah, because they'll really want me. Uh, <laughs> I think you'll be okay on your own with this whole getting the movie made thing. I don't think, hmm, who will we get to play Leaf's kind of wacky Scottish sidekick? <laughs> who will we get to play the gay Viking that runs after Leaf? Goes, Can I get that for you, Leaf? You know, I don't think that it's going to work like that. You know, we've got two touchstones in our life in, oh, yeah? in common. Yeah, what's that then? Um, I played Johnny in the original Bad Boy Johnny and the Prophets of Doom. I did that musical with Daniel uh, Abenaris thing. You, yeah. you, I didn't know you did I that. I did the very first one in Melbourne, um, which raised the money to put on the very first production. But wow. he shafted me yeah, after he, the production. Yeah, right? yeah. And it was so funny. I got that rascal, news. Yeah. Oh, he is a bit of a rascal, yeah, yeah. yeah. I got that news the same day I auditioned for the first movie that I ever got. And the character that I played in that movie was, was Johnny in the movie called The Crossing where I met my wife. But it was just a weird moment for me in my life because for three years I'd been Johnny in that musical in one right. form or another because I'd developed it with him or whatever. Then as soon as it was looking like it was going ahead, I got... You shafted you? I, yeah, you know. But on the same day, I picked up another job and the character was called Johnny, so I was kind of like, well, <laughs> Kermit, actually. <laughs> Sorry, what did you say? I, I think I missed that. <laughs> yes, yes, a whole lot of Kermit. Yeah, yes. yeah. Well, that's... That's fantastic because I I did it in London. They were trying to do it in the West End. I didn't play Johnny. You didn't I get any any bomb threats though. You no, got a yeah, lot of yeah, bomb yeah, threats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we were on for ten days. And you would have been the guy they were after being yeah, fired on I, the plane. Yeah, because I I played the part of the perverted satanic priest. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> which which is a role I always coveted. It was a great role. Probably, it was a great role. Probably the second best lead role in a musical since Frankenfurt. Frank, I did uh, Rocky Horror Show as well. Did you do that? I did 415 performances of the Rocky Horror Show. I must have done about the same. I did eight shows a week for about. Yeah, I did it in the West End of London. I played. Uh, I played Brad Majors, the All American Kid. Here? Yeah. <laughs> Forget it. You played uh, Brad. I played Brad. Yeah, I was the American. I was like, yeah. I, I, really? I mean, uh, that's all I oh, could so do. So you didn't do it as a Scotsman? No, 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 no. Because no. that would have been good. Oh, well, actually, I did do it as you a don't Scotsman. Wear things under your no, no, no. kilt, and I... so that would have sold a few more tickets. Or a few less tickets. A few less tickets. <laughs> I, no, I did it as a... I didn't mean to play him as a Scotsman, but I ended up playing him as a Scotsman who lived uh, in America. Right. Right. That, <laughs> accents weren't your forte Yeah, that's not really stage. my thing. No, no, no. Right. Who did you play in Rocky Horror? I played Eddie and Dr. Scott. That's a good role. For 400 shows, and then I played Frankenfurter for the last 15. Oh, nice. Mm. Did you wear the uh, stockings and the... I made so many mistakes in those 15 shows. Yeah. Right? I, there was an opportunity for me to either continue on as Frankenfurter, or I had this sort of what I considered at the, the time a real job opportunity to, to do Blood Brothers, right? Mm -hmm. And because there's no fourth wall in, in, in Rocky Horror, you know, the, and you can just talk directly to the audience, mm. I just sort of went out and, and did that, you know, and just fell into it, so, so, fell into like a pile of poo. Right. So many, 
so many times. You know, like one night I went out there and somebody was calling something out from the audience, so I said, you'd never make a transvestite, darling. There wouldn't be enough lipstick to go around your mouth. Whoa. <laughs> Cut to later on such... in the bar, you know, tap, tap, tap on the shoulder. Big ass tranny going, that was me you were talking to. <laughs> and you know what? I was that transvestite. <laughs> Yeah. No, I yeah. like. Did you did you learn to dance around in the heels? Yes, had to do all that. Yeah, we, yeah. When I was doing, I practiced it. walking around the house in the high heels. You did. I still do. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard habit to break. <laughs> that is, once you get that, it's like crack for I mean, your once, feet. Once you can yeah. do it well. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And the other one is that uh, is it when the Drew Carey show started up? Yeah. I, w I knew Bruce. Bruce Alford. Yeah. 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 yeah so that's just kind of amazing that considering those touchstones that we haven't actually met before. Now, I don't know if we haven't actually met, because I was drunk for a long time, and I'm guessing. <laughs> and a lot of that time was in Australia, actually. Was it? Yeah, I was drunk in uh, the Club Kakadu up there in uh, Sydney. Uh, and then Club I got... Kakadu in Sydney? Club Kakadu, yeah. You never heard okay. of the Club Kakadu? No. no. Ah, was... <laughs> and then there was... Club uh... Kakadu is up actually in the Kakadu National Park, which is in the Northern Territory. No, 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 that's a different Kakadu. <laughs> Uh, that's a whole oh, other not, bag of kakadu. You're not kakadu right? the place, you're kakadu the feeling. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling kind of kakadu! Yeah, right, that! Right, right. Uh, and uh, what the. Uh, what, what age were you when you gave up drinking? Oh, 29. 29? Yeah. See, I just don't think you gave a good enough go. <laughs> I reckon if you give up drinking before you're 30, you didn't try. <laughs> you know? And especially if you give up drinking before you're successful, it's kind of cheating. Right. Yeah, I agree, yes, that's now, true. now you're going up against a whole lot of drunk people and no wonder you're getting ahead because they're all... Excuse pissed. me, I'm not getting ahead. <laughs> the, you're getting ahead and you're drunk. I'm not getting ahead. Well, I think this is a pretty good... Amount. The whole thing has come clear to me. Now I know why you're an American citizen because they will not let you back into Scotland because you don't drink anymore. Well, that's not true. No, no, no. There, there's over, there are over 14 people who don't drink in that country now. It's spreading like wildfire. I heard of an Australian who didn't drink. I know. <laughs> I know. So I, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine? No, it must happen, I'm sure. So you, you just sort of like got sick of waking up in other people's houses with, or something? Yeah, houses, houses would have been a step up. Yeah. Yeah. Dumpsters was really. I was, really? I, yeah, I was very, I was very wild with it. I mean, I, I know I gave up before I was thirty, but it was only three months before my thirtieth birthday, and I was, you know, ready. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Well, I've given up drinking quite a few things, but not altogether. <laughs> There's just some things I just don't drink anymore because I realise that me and that particular product don't see eye to eye at a certain time in the morning. Are we talking about tequila? <laughs> No, Tequila and I are good friends. Uh-huh. Uh, tequila, vodka and I can, can get on pretty mm -hmm. well. Uh, it's just the dark liquors that don't seem to bring out the best of my personality. <laughs> ah, rum buggery in the lash. <laughs> now you have me thinking. <laughs> Russell, it's a joy to finally meet you. Will you come back and see us soon? Absolutely, man. All right, Russell Crowe, cool. everybody. We'll be right back. It's like my childhood. Please welcome Russell Crowe, everybody. Evening, Craig. How are you, my dear? Very, very good. Yeah, good. Very you look good. well. You look very movie starish. You've got your black uh, on. You've got your it's... exciting socks. Yes. I like that it's, everything's all black and then there's just that little bit of colour on mm. the socks that say, I cannot be tamed. <laughs> Indeed. I, I, in fact, can be tamed. Right. <laughs> it's black. The film looks good. But it's probably your underwear that you've got a little colour in. I go nuts for my underwear. Do you want to see? I've got a little blue on tonight. Look at this. Look at that. <laughs> So that means at some point in time you'll be running around pantless. Oh, here's open with, with the shirt. It's like, obviously, that's why you match them up. Right, yeah, it's just I... so you inside, you know that you're color coordinated. Oh, I like to know that everything's fabulous underneath. 
How have you? Everything fabulous underneath with you? Your basic black, yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> black all the way. All the way, baby. Dangerous. Right through. You shouldn't go black, though, because it makes everything look smaller. <laughs> I need to do that, otherwise people scream and oh, run away. Oh, touche. Thank you. All right, welcome, Russell. I forgot it was you. <laughs> the film looks good. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been great going around talking to people about it. It's, it's really fun when you can talk about something and people assume they know what it's going to be. Right. And then when they see the film, they go, that was nothing like I was expecting. Well, they were expected to be guys in tights and then you shoot in the apple and yeah, well, shoot the so other one and the other one. <laughs> so many cliches associated with Robin Hood that people expect. You know, little John and Robin meet on a log, have a staff fight. At some point, Robin dresses up and goes in an archery competition. And at some point, you know, Maid Marian gets captured and there's a damsel in distress and needs saving. Yeah. We don't do any of that. <laughs> really? No. Not at all. Are you sure this is a Robin Hood film, then? What, uh, <laughs> what happens, then? Is Little John in it? Little John is in it, and he's Scottish. Is he? Who plays yeah. him? A guy called Kevin Durand, who's from know. Thunder Bay in Ontario in Canada. That's nearly Scotland, I guess. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he's uh, a man of the north. Yeah, yeah, all right. Way, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. Yeah. No, he's I've been to Thunder Bay. It's quite Scottish up there. A lot of people drunk and the weather's bad. <laughs> <laughs> he's, um... He's a really good chap and he's a great actor and he yeah. did the accent very, very well. Yeah. And what about, what about your accent? Do you do the English accent in the film? I do a northern English accent. Really? What, Newcastle yeah. or something like no, that? No, not as far up as that. It's kind of a, a high Britty, Yorkshire, Barnsdale, Nottingham kind of oh, thing. All right, well, a bit like that, sort of talk like that a little bit. A little bit like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, <laughs> but better. <laughs> I mean, you're Close. Russell Crowe, and I've got this crap going on. <laughs> I understand. Cool. But that's good. So what's, uh, the movie, then, is, is historically accurate, then? Well, I mean, as, as accurate as you can be, really, because there's so many different assumptions about Robin Hood. The story may, in fact, go all the way back to 870 AD. You know, so we... we recalibrated the story based on the simple fact that, you know, most Robin Hoods finish with King Richard riding at the end he, of the Yeah, Sean Connery comes back at the end and goes, right. this is awesome. And then that's yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. But when you look at it, you realise that King Richard went on crusade. Um, by the way, King Richard, the great English hero, was a Frenchman. Yeah, uh, yeah. Didn't speak English. And, he did? Uh, no, had a grand disregard for all things England. Tried to sell the city of London at one point, was pissed off he couldn't get a buyer. No one uh, would buy London? No. It'd be very no. expensive, I'd imagine. Well, it wasn't that expensive at the time, you wouldn't think. It wasn't that big. I, I don't know. I mean, how much was it? You didn't research this, no, did you? No, I didn't. I didn't get to the actual price he was looking for. Yeah, but the um, thing is, Richard never made it back to England. He got killed uh, putting a minor French castle to siege in really? southern France. Yeah, through crossbow bolt through the neck, shot by a French cook. So we start our Robin Hood by killing King Richard. So you know straight away oh, that right. this isn't going to be any Robin Hood. So it's Hood not that you Sean assume. Connery then. No, no. <laughs> Well, yeah. well, that's a choice, man. Couldn't I don't get, know if I can really it. go with you on this, because if it's not Sean Connery, I mean... We couldn't get any of the Connery family. You know? None of the, none of no, the Connery... because, you know, he was Robin Hood, his oh, son yeah, was Robin son Hood, was Robin his Hood. granddaughter's uh, ribbon R R hid. Um, Laura Hood. Laura... <laughs> Bobby. Bobby Hood. Bobby Hood, I yeah. guess. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Where did you make the film? Did you go to England to make it? We did. We did. Right. We shot uh, in and around Surrey, uh, Derbyshire we went up to, um, we went to the west of Scotland, a place called Freshwater West, uh, it's not Scotland, sorry, Wales. Oh, um, oh yeah. Oh, the same, really. No, no, not the same. <laughs> not the same at all. Did you ever Amazing go, did place, you, you, did you go drinking in Wales? Did you ever drink with a Welshman? We did, and we were thoroughly disappointed. Really? Yeah. Yeah, because they all, at, at a certain point, you know, the arguments began, that's great, that's what you expect. Right, Aussie, you know? Scots and the Welsh, yeah, and right. the Irish, of course. But. You know what they wanted to argue about in what? Wales? What? They wanted to argue about English cricket. Really bothered me. Did you go to a gay bar in Wales, maybe? <laughs> I was just, you know, I'm there trying to get an argument going about, remember the centenary test, you know, right, Wales right. versus All Blacks, Brian McKechnie kicks the penalty goal in the last minute, and they're like, no? No. No. We want to talk about cricket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so things a lot have, of them are things have from changed. Romania. Yeah, that's why I did that. Must have. Accent. <laughs> You know, when I was a young fellow, I was about to play a, Wel a Welshman in a movie, and I had the opportunity to talk to Anthony Hopkins. We were oh, doing yeah, reshoots on yeah. a film, you know, yeah. and I said to him, you know, Tony. T yeah, I, that's right. <laughs> I call him Tony. Is, as that, well, yeah. is that your name? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I call him Tony, and he's yeah. like, "Who the hell is that?" <laughs> so I said to him, you know, give me some tips about doing a Welsh accent, and he looked at me in a steady gaze for about 15 seconds, and he said, 
just do a really bad Indian accent and, yeah. you'll, and you'll get away with it. You know? Yeah, that's right. And I thought, you know, smart-ass thing to say, you know. But when I looked into it, I realised the Welsh Guard were the first people in place in India when the British, you know, colonised it. So uh, that's the, in the Indian rhythm. They talk a the little Welsh. bit like this. Right. And the Welsh talk a little bit like this as well. <laughs> It's very strange. The, the key phrase he gave me to remember the Welsh accent was, um, was the, uh, the bishops who ruled over Anglesey had habits of dubious taste. They would sacrifice virgins for breakfast. How barbaric. And think of the waste. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Don't worry, we can edit this. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. No, I, we we'll, should We'll chop this down. It'll we be really fascinating when you see it on no, TV. No, no. No, editing's for the movie, son. This crap's live. You're going out. <laughs> it's going out. What else have you been up to? You've been back to Oz recently? Um, yeah, I spent most of the, the year in Australia. You know, yeah. I just came on, on the road to, to Well, talk you've got about your kids now. Are they at school there? Yeah, yeah. The kids are in school there. Everybody's actually in England at the moment. Right. Um, we sort of came through here, went to England, settled them in a school, and then I've been going around Europe and then coming back here and I'll, I'll be with them in about, uh, I would say, about 12, 13 hours from now. Oh, really? You're just going to get out of here and, yeah, and, straight and, on and the go plane. there? Oh, right. Mm. Yeah. No, that's good. You should, you should maybe try and phone home right now. They're asleep. All right. I was going to say, because <laughs> if you wanted to, I'd let you borrow the phone. Oh, yeah? No, I wouldn't, let's, actually. Let's not do that. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great TV for my wife to be swearing like that. No, no, no. no. <laughs> It would mean that I probably shouldn't get on the plane. No, then. no, no. It'd be fine. It'd be fine. So uh, you, then you go in Oz. Do you have? You still you have a farm there, yeah. right? What do you yeah. have in the farm then? Well, we got about seven hundred cows. Uh, Black Angus. We, um... Black Angus. He, he's on the farm as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he looks, looks after, after the, the cows. cows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you uh, cows, get over there. Yeah. Um, we got horses, we got chickens, you know. The cool thing about the farm really is the, is the native wildlife, you know. Kangaroos? Wallabies, actually. What, which, which is kind of like a, a short kangaroo. Right, it's uh, a kind of digital kangaroo. Yeah, they're just, <laughs> it's a more compact version. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like the aggressive? coupe version of the kangaroo. Yeah. No, they're not aggressive at all. Um, well, kangaroos are aggressive, aren't they? They can be sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that's mainly a mating thing, you know. If they fancy you or if they think you fancy their woman, they'll... Uh, Go for you, yeah. Really? The thing about have you ever been attracted to a kangaroo? Sexually? <laughs> not that I can remember. Yeah. Now, are you are you genuinely not sexually attracted to kangaroos, or you're just frightened that other kangaroos will be jealous and beat you up? Well, to tell the <laughs> tell the truth, it's it's just that I know I can't catch them, so you might as well, you know, why have that desire? <laughs> You're well, only going to be disappointed. Well, maybe you could, you don't have to catch them, maybe you could entice them. Maybe a kind word, a dinner, a, you know. What do kangaroos eat? Grass. Grass? Mm. That's disappointing. I thought they, mm. I'd like them to be carnivorous. There was, way back, you know. There was, really? a, there's a dinosaur kangaroo that they found that has a big, like a, a tooth coming out of the bottom of its chin. You're making it. I got about oh, yeah. now, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, at a certain point I understand barroom talk, and that, my friend. <laughs> No, it's actually true. Yeah. There is, yeah there was a, you still playing with the band as well? Yep, yeah, we're going to get probably tour uh, through America in August. Nice. We'll come and play a song for you if you yeah, want. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, no, that'd no, be I'm lovely. Looking around to see if there's any. There's no place to play. Yeah, yeah. no, but we'll yeah. fit you in somewhere. Maybe we move the desk over actually when there's right. musicians here. Cool. Yeah. yeah so um, maybe it's just being talked about at the moment. I haven't actually been on the road since 2006, so it's sort of about time. And the wife's got an album coming out. So we do a family style. Yeah, or we'll do the partridge guys? family. I think you know. Really? Yeah, and take the kids with us, and you know. Oh, that'd be nice. Yeah, yeah. it'd be good. Just a little three-week sort of thing, not so, not too long. What age are the kids? Charlie's six, and yeah. Tennyson's three and a half. Oh, yeah, you can still do it then. It's when they're like yeah. fourteen, they'll be like, "Oh, come on, Dad." Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, that's yeah. <laughs> well, Charlie's already into that thing of like, whenever his mum or I start singing, he just like blocks his ears and runs from the room. So it's, yeah. it's charming. <laughs> Absolutely charming. Is he into music? And good for your all? confidence. Too. No, 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 no. I mean, they're, they're my, no, that's my... the thing. He loves music. Does he really? <laughs> just yeah. not, just, just not when we're doing it. Oh, you know? I just say. Yeah. Well, you, you mustn't worry about that. They're just kids will tell you the truth. That's all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's probably what I'm worried about. No, yeah. no, you'll be all right. It'll be yeah. fine. It'll be good. Be well, will you come back too. and do it then? Will you come back? Yeah, and we'll come and sing a song if you want. Yeah, that'd be nice. Cool. And we'll try and get you one of them slow kangaroos. 
Well, the, one, the cool thing about the farm, actually, is my dad has, over time, been sort of creating a relationship with the local bird life, you know, mm -hmm. um, and he's managed to make friends with about seven kookaburras. A kookaburra is a, a, basically a gigantic kingfisher with a really big bill. I know a song about the kookaburra. Yeah, you know, sitting in the old gum tree. Yeah, merry, merry king of the bushes, he. There you go. Laugh, kookaburra, laugh, kookaburra, right. gay your life must be. <laughs> And the, the people who own the publishing of that song just recently took Men at Work to court over that song Down Under because the flute solo... Do, 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 do. That's right. ...is the melody from... Yeah. Ooh, Russell, you're, you're a font of information. Oh. <laughs> anyway, so my dad and the kookaburras. So the, yeah. co the kookaburras actually act as a sort of a, a police force for the other native birds. Really? And, and yeah, so the, the introduced birds, who normally sort of shoo the native birds off, don't like mucking around with the kookaburras because they're very aggressive and they have those big bills and, you know. So we a have ended up, over time, becoming this sanctuary for a lot of native wild uh, bird life. So we've got king parrots and rosellas and sulphur-crested cockatoos, Major Mitchell I cockatoos, like a cockatoo, galahs. as you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's my gig, it's man. i got to do it. It's my gig. <laughs> It's just my thing. Look, you, you, you like Was arrows and fire them into things, and I do this. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah, anyway, so um, it's kind of fabulous now. You know, we have this amazing thing every night as the sun's going down where all these different birds, birds come and hang around. Oh, yeah, but it's just yeah. beautiful, you know. Sounds nice. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Well, get back to it then. <laughs> I will. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> uh, come back with the band, though, I, and, and good luck. I'm excited about this movie. I think it's going to be very good. I think you're going to like it, man. Yeah, you I, know, like, it's, I it's, like a bit of action. It's a very robust telling of the tale, you know, and Kate Blanchett is, is Maid Marian. Oh, yeah. And she's, she's right, spectacularly yeah. beautiful and really fun to work with. You know, actually, I've been going around telling people, you know, that Kate's a very warm and loving person and she was great fun on the set and everything. At the end of the day, we'd, you know, she'd kick off her shoes and have vodka and a chat and all that sort of stuff, you know. And it came back to her in a press conference, you know, and she's mother of three and all that sort of stuff and I suppose she's, you know, aware of her public image and they said, so Russell says at the end of a work day, you drink vodka, you know, and straight face, she goes, he drove me to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never touched a drop before I worked with him. <laughs> Russell Crowe, everybody. Anyway, not that, not this. <laughs> my, my first guest, the great big movie star in a proper movie, Russell Crowe, everybody. Russell Crow. Good evening, Craig. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. How are you? You look nice, good. dear. You look Thank nice. You're all in black like Thank a proper love. movie star in a proper movie. Yes. I wore uh, sunglasses to the premiere last night. Did you really? Yeah, it was night time. <laughs> you know that makes you a bit of a douche. <laughs> but you wouldn't say that if it was Snoop Dogg or RZA, would you? No. No, sir, I would not, because, see, for I, I would be afraid. <laughs> <laughs> what I worked out is that they're just trying to save their eyesight because of the flashes and stuff, so oh, I thought, right. you know what, I'm going to take a leaf out of their book and I shall wear sunglasses at night as well. <laughs> All right, man, if you can carry it off, good, fair play to you, that's what but I said. Before I did it, I, I forgave myself. Right, that's good, you've got to do that. Yep. Yep. By the way, yes. it's great that we're promoting this particular movie it's on this particular movie. It's a good movie, it's a proper movie. Because dun, 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 the, the director's dun. name, of director's course, name? Is Haggis. Paul Haggis, I love Paul He's been on this show many times and right. he's named after a delicious sausage from my own country. You know, when my, when my dad was a uh, pub manager, right? Right. We had a particular barmaid who, uh, well, she wasn't the sharpest knife in the drawer. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, but I know she what was you mean, a very yeah. good barmaid. Yeah. You know? And my dad had been taught by the old school, you know, where big Ooh, la -la. sell more beer. <laughs> You know what? Hold on, a minute ago, you had the Dalek looking at your ass. You had the two gay guys out here competing for a job. I say, la la. there's a problem. Yeah. What has happened to hey. America? Hey. I, I don't hey. make the rules, man. I don't make them. Anyway, so, um, yeah, so this... He's got, right, though. He's gonna, right. You can't argue with that. He's right. <laughs> I'm going to try and avoid saying her name because I don't want her to be embarrassed because she will eventually see the show. But um, she was always asking my father for advice on 
normal things, you know. And one of them was, was coming up to St Andrew's Day and my dad likes to actually make a haggis every now and then, you know. Right. Um, and so he was, he was, he was making it and, and uh, he had signs up around the, the bar that she worked in. And she came to him after a while and she said, Mr Crow, Mr Crow, can you tell me what is a haggis? Because everybody's asking me and I just don't know. No, oh, yeah. <laughs> So my dad... Can you do the pressure, you know... <laughs> Give me an idea. Give me an idea. I'm sure I'm doing enough. No, no, no. <laughs> Mr. Crow, you're saying I'm not big enough for you. No, I'm just saying you, you can throw yourself into the fart a little more, that's so. all. Anyway. <laughs> you haven't got to the rest of the story. All right, then, yeah, okay. Yeah, anyway, so my, my dad is a leg puller of the highest order, you know, right. and the opportunity, you know, with, it was a split second thing, you know, you know, could you please tell me what haggis and he, and he goes, I nearly said a name. <laughs> <laughs> he said, a haggis, a haggis is an eight-legged spider that lives on the rocky coast of Scotland. Right. And once a year, the Scottish natives <laughs> will go down <laughs> yeah, right. to the rocky shoreline yeah. with some very strong pepper. <laughs> they sprinkle the pepper on the rocks. Right. And when this large, eight-legged, hairy spider... Most spiders have got eight legs, Russ. She didn't know that. Right, OK. She's asking about haggis. Yeah, I understand. On St Andrew's Day... That was just a little extra detail right, to no, it's good, help it's her good. along. No, no, I like your dad for this. They will, the spiders will come out intrigued as to what the odour is All right. and smell the pepper, <laughs> immediately sneeze, sneeze of course. <laughs> yes. knock themselves out on the rocks and the natives of Scotland will come along and pick them up, take them home and cook them, and which is what I'm doing now. So go and tell everybody that, which she did for the whole day. <laughs> Does she know now that it's, that's actually a little bit of a fabrication, that haggis is... Well, that was probably about 1976 he did that gag, so you'd right. hope that she'd picked up on it. I don't know. We used to tell all sorts of stories about haggis, because no one really wants to know the awful truth. It's kind of like... The awful awful truth. truth. The awful, awful truth, exactly so. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. And it oh, yeah. Even realize it. It's amazing. No wonder you have this job. Oh, I didn't know you were going to be talking like this, Russell. <laughs> You know what, if you want, we can talk like this for the entire interview, I'm well, fine. Considering I wore sunglasses at night last night, oh. I can do anything. I let me ask you, will you be going to the royal wedding? Oh, I oh, so. Oh, oh, me too. I hope so. Oh, me too. <laughs> hey. Now, is the Queen, uh, is the Queen still the Queen of Australia? Did you guys have a vote about it? Is she still the Queen of Australia? Or she, yes, she, she's the head of, head of state, yeah. Right. Yeah. So she can come over there and drink free any pub in the country? <laughs> no. Yep. yep. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. it. I, 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 I would probably say you wouldn't find a single hotel owner in Australia that would charge Elizabeth if she came in the door asking for a sherry. That, you know, that, that must be a, a, a nice feeling. To know that there's an entire country where you can drink for free. Must that must be, be like being Russell Crowe in many ways. <laughs> <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> hey! Um, yes. Did you get uh, Doctor Who in Australia? Did you get yeah, the Yeah, we did. Oh, I, you did. I was never a fan. Oh, you're I'm, not a fan yeah, of Doctor sorry, Who? Yeah, sorry, I've heard you're a bit obsessed. Well, not obsessed. Uh, yeah, a little bit obsessed. You know, you know, for me, there was never enough naked women in Doctor Who. <laughs> Well, it's not that kind of thing. I mean, you can't say, oh, I don't really like, you know, sandwiches. There's no naked women in them. <laughs> Some things don't have naked women in them. Look, I'm a fan of naked women as much as the next man, but you can't. You can't have naked women in everything. I don't see why not. You know, I can't argue with that kind of homespun <laughs> logic. Do you still keep the horses? Yeah. Oh, do <laughs> we? Uh, <laughs> I've said hello to the boys. Oh, have you? Yeah. <clears throat> Say hello to the Vagas! <laughs> You still keep the horses, I said, I said I wasn't going to do that, but I thought, uh -oh. why not? Well, no, you've um, got to do it. You've got to do I it. I talked to them, uh, particularly the, uh, the back end, and I, I, <laughs> I, admired, I admired his, his obvious uh, connection with the, with the horse. Oh, now, oh. As, a, as a performer. Oh, yeah. And the front he end is what he's connected his, to. His <laughs> inner horse. Oh, yeah. No, yes. he's, he's very, very good. He wears sunglasses at night. He's that good. <laughs> 
<laughs> he walks around wearing big those big fur pads, the bottom of the horse. You see him at movie premieres, walking around, sunglasses, big fur pads. He was probably there last night. He was. Do you see him? Yeah, he was on the red carpet. Do you enjoy all that red carpet thing? How Russell, what are you wearing? All that stuff. Um, last night was a particularly boring one. Really? Some of them are. Yeah. We did one in New York a, a week and a half ago, which was really exciting. Was well, New York's good because there's stores along the way. You can stop, go get a bit of pizza or something like that. <laughs> LA is just carpet. But what you tend to do, you see, is you tend to spend your whole day when you're doing these press junkets, doing these interviews right. and talking about the movie. Then you get to the red carpet and you do it again. You know, so it's sort of, uh, it starts to feel like some sort of torture at a certain point. It's almost as if you had to go to the same place every night and do the same damn thing. <laughs> Every damn night. But why a fella might lose his Tootsie Fruitsie. Mine, after one. <laughs> so when I do like red carpets is when uh, my wife's with me. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because she, you know, gets all dressed up and everything, and I kind of like that. Oh, I hear where you're going. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're saying. Naked lady business. Yeah. Well, I mean, what, what you wear on a, on a red carpet is significant, you know, bump above what you wear around the house. You know? <laughs> Can you hang around for a bit? We'll do a commercial break and we'll come back and you can tell me about that. <laughs> we'll be right back with Russell Crowe. everybody, I'm here with Russell Crowe. We don't normally talk to each other when, unless the cameras are on. And I realised... At that time you called me. <laughs> I'm wearing my red carpet outfit. <laughs> and what clan are you from, son? I said. I was like, why are you doing a Pakistani accent? I said. It's very difficult now, what, accent um, for actors. What's actually, Scottish. is it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah, Billy Boyd used to teach me the thing that you should say to a fellow, uh, to a, a Scotsman, because my family's Scottish. Yeah, yeah. From the town of Weems. Weems? Yeah. Weems Bay? Why, it's heaven on earth, sir. Is it? Weems Bay? It's, it's, it's Shangri-La, Las Vegas, and Beverly Hills rolled into somewhere nearby. <laughs> Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, so he said uh, the thing that you should say is Lang may your lum reek. Oh yes, that, that's a very nice thing to say. Lang may your lum reek. It means long may your chimney smoke. Hmm. <laughs> that's the literal translation. What yeah. it really means is enjoy your penis. <laughs> it does. So do you have a, a family, you know, kilt? Yeah, yeah, a tartan. You yeah. sure? I know a crest. I've got it tattooed on my arm. Dulciest ex aspirus, it says. What's the tartan? Uh, the tartan is just like a greeny kind of tartan and dulciest ex aspirus. What's the name of the tartan, though? Uh, uh, tartan. <laughs> So the Weems Tartan is the Black Watch. Oh, no, no, no. The Black Watch was a regiment in Scotland. That was yeah. an army regiment. And, and my tartan is Ferguson Tartan, because Fergusons oh. have their own tartan. Crows, not at all. But, uh, <laughs> Ferguson's Yeah, no, well, the, the Black Watch, you know, did look after that border for the Romans. Didn't well, they? they kind of, uh, the Black Watch, I think, kind of really forged the British Empire. There was a hugely powerful regiment, very, very distinguished regiment. And it was disbanded in Britain a while ago, I think for financial reasons, probably, to give more money to the Queen. <laughs> I look forward to your angry letters, English people on the internet. Uh, cool, anyway. Yeah, we so, uh, yeah, you, you keep the horses, though, still, then. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, I've right. got uh, two that are pregnant at the moment. How many horses have you got? Five, five, uh, five nice horses and then a bunch of sort of working horses as well or ones what, that we don't Evil ride. horses? Do you have some in? No, well, you see, there's, you know, uh, I have guys that work on the property who work with the, the cattle, so they have horses to ride when they're rounding up and stuff. You have cattle and horses? Mm. You're like a yeah. real dude. <laughs> Do you walk around there? You don't walk around Australia with your I can have sunglasses on at night, no, do you? <laughs> nah, yeah. You never. No, nah, you that. would never do that nah, there. Wouldn't oh. even do it. You see Russell wearing his sunglasses at night? What a winker. Yeah. <laughs> what the hell is that? What a tosser. Yeah, um, yeah, anyway. Mm. Yeah, so I've got two, the two uh, are in fall at the moment. One of them probably give birth in the next week or something. Well, that's adorable. Will that's you be fantastic. there? Yeah. Oh, I don't think I'll be there, actually, this time around. But 
it's fantastic watching the horses oh, grass. We never talked about the movie. The movie, that's what we have to talk about, the movie. The movie, you know when you were drawing the map, dun, 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 and Liam Neeson's going, Dad, you've got to get yourself out of there before they are. <laughs> 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 the food oh, is made oh, oh, of oh, poison. Oh. What? I can't hear you. Don't give away any more of the plot. <laughs> yeah, it starts on Friday. Yeah. That's all you need to know. There you go. <laughs> are you going to go? Do you no. ever go to the movie theater when you're in the movie and just like kind of sneak in? No. <laughs> well, actually, no. I did once. Yeah? Yeah, the, the uh, DGA theater were having a screening of Cinderella Man. Directors and was... Guild of America, for yours if you're not in show business like me. <laughs> and, um... Uh, I was doing a Q&A there afterwards, so I just really wanted to feel how the audience were responding to it. So I, I went down the side of the building and, and crept in the fire exit, and, and so I, could look, I couldn't see the screen, but I could see the audience's faces. Right. And it was right in the final championship bout, and it was crazy, it was great. You enjoyed it? People were just covering their eyes and freaking out, and one woman was just crying her eyes out, it was fantastic. <laughs> I mean, that's not watching the movie, that's watching the audience. Yeah. yeah. Do so it's I have kind of like what you said, but different. But different, yeah. So what you're saying is yes, but no. I'm, I'm saying no, but... Okay, that's good. There was a, 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 a variation on the theme. Do you know but that I heard a story about uh, Anthony Hopkins that went to a screening. He went to, in Britain, in the movie theatre, he went to a screening, just a regular like afternoon screening of Silence of the Lambs. Right. When that was out. And when <laughs> it was finished, he leaned over, because a woman sat in front of him, and he leaned over and went, Did you enjoy that? <laughs> Isn't that great? That's very true. Yeah. I mean, but that's a lot of sitting around watching your own movie for one joke, isn't it? <laughs> so what's next after that? What are you going down? Are you going back to Oz now? Are you still talking around all about the movie for the next couple of weeks? or Well, what? The, the, I had a longer schedule, but it looks like I'm going to get to go home now, which is good. Oh, really? Yeah, go back and see the, the kids. And are you, at what age are your kids now? Then? Charlie is six. And Tennyson is four. So is Charlie riding horses yet? Then? They've both been on horses. Yeah. Um, but Charlie's sort of, uh, he's decided he's, you know, a little bit wary of them now. But he wasn't when he was younger, but now, now he is. But, did, uh, did you grow up around horses? Was that Because no, your dad was uh, talking to uh, barmaids with big chests. You can't. Right. <laughs> and before that, he used to do mufflers. <coughs> for cars. <laughs> for motor vehicles. And... Uh, like you, I thought of that, too. <laughs> um, do you do mufflers, Russell? <laughs> and when you do, do you wear your sunglasses? Let me put it this way. I think mufflers are very important. Yeah, they are. Let, let me tell you, mufflers are extremely <clears throat> important because without them, there's a lot of noise. <laughs> I got... Yeah, yeah, in your pants, yeah. So, um, yeah, back to the horses thing. My parents were location caterers and they were driving through the western suburbs of the outer reaches where the Blue Mountains are once when I was about nine or ten and they found a place called Teen Ranch. Teen Ranch? Yeah, which was a Christian youth camp for uh -huh. kids. For kids. And at that stage, which is the early 70s, it costs, or mid-70s, it costs about $7 a week to send your kid away for a whole week. Nice. And they were like, bargain. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So they would pack me and my brother off to this place, Teen Ranch, and we would ride horses and sing songs for Jesus. Do you still sing songs for Jesus, Russell? On the occasion. Glad yes. to hear it. Yeah. I'll whip out a hymn. <laughs> While yeah. I'm doing a muffler. No, no, no! <laughs> Let it lie, that's it. Hey, anyway, we're out of time now. Do you fancy right. awkward pause or harmonica? Harmonica. All right. Ah, there you go. Do you play? I was wondering whether you... No, I don't. Oh, right, I, good, I good, have been pretty yeah, warned. Yeah. What key have we got? Um, I don't understand the question. <laughs> All right, you good? Uh, hold on, I'm just looking for what the key is. All right. And so this yeah, is just me a too. general I, one. I think it's... Uh, <laughs> It's usually etched on the side. Don't get then. your fingers all over my damn organ, man. Look. I gotta blow that in a your, minute. Your organ's wet. <laughs> yeah, well, of course my organ's wet. I've, it's been in my mouth. How come I get the cheap one? I get the cheap plastic one. It's not. It, it, well, I've got the wooden one because wood's more durable. But it's smaller. You notice how mine is smaller than yours? I have a smaller organ than you, Russell. <laughs> What was the Matilda then? Go on then. All right then.
Just the chorus? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now remember, you haven't paid for this. So when it's disappointing, you've really got nothing to complain about. It's like he knows the show! Ready? Come on, I'm telling you. One, two, three, four. I'm talking about that's a movie no gay vampires no <laughs> no it's a movie with movie stars doing stuff and drawing maps and things on things and cops getting ready and the music going dun, 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 dun. it's like a movie like a proper movie where you go yeah <laughs> not like the trailer for the Justin Bieber movie have you seen that <laughs> have you seen that they said he'd never make it he's 17 <laughs> They said I'd never make it. For how long did they say it? About six weeks. 